Chukana Boy is one of Kenya's iconic fossil discovery uh, that was dis discovered in 1984 by a team led by Dr. Richard Leakey. The fossil was discovered at a place called uh, or known as Narekotome, uh, which is on the western shores of Lake Chukana in northern Kenya. Uh, Chukana boy is a skeleton that belongs to the, the genus and species Homo erectus. It dates to around 1.6 million years old. And uh, to date, it's one of the most complete human ancestor ever recovered anywhere else in the world. Uh, about 90% of the skeleton was recovered and uh, this followed um, excavations that lasted from uh, 1984 all the way into 1988. Um, at least three months of excavation every single year and that resulted in the in the uh, an earthing of about 90 percent of the entire two cannabis skeleton this was a young individual who died between probably the age of eight and 12 years old uh, uh, we know it was a boy largely because of the, the velvic bone the velvic area uh, that clearly suggest that this was a, a, a boy as opposed to a girl. Uh, we know it was a, a young individual largely because the teeth were still wrapped in and also the long bones were, were not fully fused. You can um, talk about that based, based, based on the articular ends of the long bones that are that are not are not fully fused. So we know Trukana boy died between the age of eight and twelve years old, and we believe that the boy, uh, after the boy died, the skeleton must have gotten buried almost immediately, because if that did not happen, uh, I mean, of course, hyenas and other carnivores would have would have scavenged on the on, on the skeleton. So we believe that uh, Trukana boy, uh, uh, the body was was buried almost immediately after death. Trukana boy is really, really a very interesting fossil and a very, very important fossil in understanding about human ancestry, largely because of because it's very complete, and again also uh, again also because it's 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 been uh, able to help us understand how members of this particular species grew what we call uh, development by history of, of how members of uh, our earlier ancestor, uh, Homo erectus, uh, evolved. We can, we can determine the different stages in their growth based on the studies uh, that have been carried out on, on this particular skeleton. So the skeleton is a, it's a very, very key human uh, fossil, very, very key uh, human ancestor, very, very key human uh, specimen because out of that we, we are able to document and, and understand how the different stages uh, through which uh, members of our own genus would have gone through from the very early age to into maturity. Uh, so out of Trokana Boy, there's been lots, lots of lots of studies and, and, and even the, just the cranium around the, the, the head, or the jaw, the long bones. Uh, st and tons and tons of different studies have come out of the Trokana Boy. And in, indeed, Trokana Boy has placed Kenya on the world map in terms of uh, human uh, evolutionary studies are concerned. And, and this is because this particular fossil has um, attracted a lot of researchers from all over the world who've come to, to, to Kenya to study this, just this one particular fossil. Again, I also want to, to, to emphasize the fact that Trukana boy is just one of the very many uh, hundreds of other fossils, human fossils, that have been recovered in Kenya. Many other parts of the country, uh, um, just, not just Trukana uh, Basin, but also Barigo Basin, Olukisele Basin, and other parts of the country 
And, and these forces, together with, with the Trukana boy, have really reaffirmed or, or confirmed or strengthened Kenya's position as a cradle of, of, of humanity. Indeed, Kenya, Kenya's fossil record, especially the, the human fossil record, is very, very complete. And that shows our ancestry or evolution as a species from the very early stages into, into, into the present. Uh, so indeed, uh, Trukana boy and many other Kenyan fossil remains, especially the human remains, have helped us understand the ancestry of human evolution and, and, and our, the whole place Kenya on the world map in terms of really our contribution on, on understanding about, about human ancestry. Uh, and, and again also, uh, archaeologically, we have some, some, some wonderful tools that have been recovered also in, in Kenya. Uh, we, know, we know the stone tools that have been largely associated with the Homo erectus uh, are hand access, but again also we have other older stone tools that have been recovered in other parts of the country. We have, uh, we have the locality tools, we also have the, the recently the earliest or the oldest stone tools that were reported, uh, 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 that were recovered at a site called Lomekwi to the western shores of Tukana. These, these to date are the earliest stone tools. They date to 3.3. And, and although these predate uh, Tukana to boy, they were, they were made and used by, by the, the, the earlier ancestors who came before uh, the famous Tukana boy. So indeed, all this unique heritage, all this unique archaeological and fossil remains have placed Kenya on the world map in terms of really our understanding about human ancestry, in terms of really our understanding about, about ancient ecosystems, past ecosystems. And again, also, if you think about the, the many, the many, I mean, the, the thousands of other, other non-human fossils that have been recovered in, in Kenya, uh, we have uh, over, over, over a million fossil remains that have been recovered from different parts of the country uh, that are non-human. We have uh, um, dinosaurs, for example. We have, we have gone for theirs. So these are extinct. Uh, relatives of the modern day elephant, we have, uh, we have uh, carnival, big carnivores, we have rhinos, we have hippos, we have uh, bovids, the antelopes, we have lots of lots of other fauna taxa that have been recovered in different parts of the country. These help us understand uh, the, the ecosystems uh, in which these animal ancestors live because this, these humans did not live in isolation, they lived in, a, in, in some ecosystems. They lived alongside other faunal, faunal, faunal species. So all these different faunal material help us understand the kind of ecosystems in which our early ancestors, human ancestors, would have lived because they never lived in isolation. They lived alongside other faunal species. Also the discovery of even, even uh, flora, I mean like, like uh, fossil plants, also help us understand the kind of vegetation that was there, or that uh, prevailed, or that was in, in, in existence when our alien ancestors lived. So when you go to Trukana and other parts of the country, we collect all kinds of uh, fossil evidence, both uh, fauna and flora, and all those help us understand the kind of the kind of ecosystems, the kind of environments in which our, our alien ancestors lived uh, in the last six million years ago.